Some crazy person dubbed 2020 the year of the RV. They were totally wrong. It's gonna be this year. I'm Jason Epperson. This is RV Miles. Here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news and how it affects you out on the road. A lot of hay was made in 2020 about the boom in RV sales. And if you look at the actual numbers, it wasn't actually that impressive. The fourth best year for RV sales ever. It's great, it's good. It's not a several hundred percent increase like what the RV rental business is seeing. I talked with CEO of Outdoorsy, Jeff Cavins earlier today for this week's RV Miles podcast, which you can check out right here on YouTube or on any podcast app. And Jeff's expecting this to be another really big year for RV rentals. He has RV renters earning in the millions. They've bought several RVs, are renting them out, and earned millions last year. That's not going to change this year, but what is going to change? More RVs are going to be sold. The real big news about last year was the lack of inventory. RVs were sold, sure, but it was very hard for RVs to get made. RV manufacturers had to deal with COVID shutdowns. They had to deal with their suppliers having COVID shutdowns. And in fact, the supply chain hasn't even caught up yet. So at this point, RV manufacturers still aren't completely up to speed. I've heard people say over and over again, I'm not buying an RV that was built in 2020 because they built them so fast. And there might be some truth to reasons you might not want to buy an RV that was built in 2020, but more than likely it's because it was sitting out in a yard somewhere without an air conditioner on its roof. But I'm hearing from dealers actually that they're kind of impressed with the quality of units that were built in 2020 because the limits on supplies made it so that manufacturers actually kind of had to take their time. But this year, production is ramping up and so are sales. Dealerships are still having a very hard time getting their lots replenished. And before 100 people comment on this video telling me they drive by dealerships every single day that have their lots full of RVs, those RVs are sold, guaranteed. RV dealerships are way down in inventory. They've got some, yes. But I actually went shopping at Funtown RV in Waco uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were looking at units that had already been, they were just shipped there to be delivered to a customer. They were not owned by that dealership. And I watched Josh Winter's recent video over on the Halet RV YouTube channel, which you should absolutely check out. Great insider information from a dealer's perspective. Josh was saying that Halet RV and lots of dealerships are already beginning to introduce a floor model type sales experience where they keep RVs on the lot just for you to look at so that you can order them because they can't get them on their lots. The manufacturers are filling orders for customers first and the customers... Well, there's a long line of them waiting for their RVs. But RVs are being sold whether they're on the lots or not. January was an excellent month for most dealerships, way better than 2019. And we're going to see that trend continue as the pandemic continues on. But you know what? It's not just about the pandemic. I hear from people all the time that wait until the pandemic's over. There's going to be this glut of used RVs out there. And I've, I've talked about that quite a bit in the past. But there's more to this. Boomers are using the pandemic as a reason to retire. They're at retirement age. They've lost their job. Their hours have been cut back or they're being forced to work from home and they don't want to do that. A lot of them are just saying, hey, it's time to retire. Also, pickup truck sales are at an all-time high. It's an absurd number of pickups that are being sold right now. 75% of new vehicles sold are pickup trucks. That is going to drive how people vacation. They're deciding, hey, I already have this truck. I can pull something with it. And 90% of RVs sold are trailers. So the RV industry is cyclical. We are in a boom. It's a boom and bust business. And this boom came faster than anybody thought it was going to be. It seemed like 2020 was going to be the beginning of a bust cycle. But in reality, we've just had a fast forward to the next boom cycle. And this is going to be with us for a few years. Now, what does that mean for us camping this year? It means campground availability is down. Campgrounds are being booked solid. And if you haven't made your reservations for the camping season yet, you need to get on that right away, especially because all of these people that have these RVs now are planning to camp longer. 
Harvest Host, the organization that helps you find boondocking spots at wineries and farms, also had a glow up in 2020, increasing their business fourfold. And they just recently did a survey of their customers, 76% of whom say they plan to travel more this year than they did in 2020. The pandemic, remote work, all that is keeping people out longer because they're taking their vacation time and extending it. They're able to work from home. They're bringing that on the road with them. So book those camp spots now or get yourself set up for some boondocking. There is some good news on that front though. There are a lot of new campgrounds being constructed right now. There are old campgrounds that are being rebuilt and repurposed, but I've actually been asked to talk a lot recently to new campground developers about what makes a good campground there's a lot of money a lot of interest flowing into campground development koa the largest chain of campgrounds they're all franchised but it's a chain of campgrounds say that from 2000 to 2006 no new koas were built well now there are 12 under construction and as much as we've heard about national parks being very busy in 2020 visitation to national parks was actually down it will certainly go up again this year Speaking of national parks, I reported last week on the new mask mandate on federal lands and in federal buildings. And I read the executive order and I was talking about how it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be wearing a mask at your campsite or when walking around outdoors in nature on federal lands. Well, I can now confirm that the National Park Service has implemented the executive order rules. And what the National Park Service is saying is now that face masks are now required in all national park buildings and facilities. Masks are also required on NPS managed lands when physical distancing cannot be maintained, including narrow or busy trails, overlooks, and historic homes. So if you're not near people, you don't need to wear a mask when you're out on federal lands. So what if you are looking for an RV, a new one or a used one? Where is the best place to find one? Well, RV Trader, which is the largest online marketplace for RV sales, says that the states with the top inventories right now are Texas with 16,000 units, Florida with 14,000 units, and California with 11,000 units. No surprise there, three of the biggest states, three of the biggest RVing states, three states with a lot of people, and three states with excellent weather. If you are looking to buy an RV, you're probably going to pay more this year. Or if you're looking to sell an RV, you might make a little bit more money off of it this year. J.D. Power's year-end review of recreational vehicles says that standard hitch trailers brought in 7.4% more revenue in 2020 than 2019, and that gap widened in the second half of the year. And fifth-wheel units had already started the year strong, but the segment really took off, averaging a 13.7% increase. Before the winter began, there was a lot of concern from popular snowbird destinations, places where people come down south for the winter, about whether or not those campgrounds would be full. Would people that live in the north, that have homes in the north, stay in the north for the winter? Plus, 10% of snowbirders are from Canada, and would the fact that the border is closed really limit the number of snowbirds that were coming south for the winter. Well, it turns out that most snowbird reliant campgrounds are finding that their sales are about the same this year as they were last year. And part of that's due to just the increase of travelers in general. So again, I think you can expect next year's snowbird season to be much, much bigger. The pandemic isn't just driving more campers to hit the road. We're also seeing changes in the way RVs are constructed based on the fact that there are more people that are looking to do remote work out there. And a prime example of that is a new floor plan from Airstream. Airstream has debuted the 2021 Flying Cloud 30FB office floor plan. This unit features a full office space in the back. It takes up about a sixth of the whole trailer and it has a full desk with a rolling office chair and a little bench and the ability to sit and do your work with cabinets overhead and all your stuff and all the things that you need to have an office on hand with you. We're going to see a lot more office floor plans coming in the near future, especially as manufacturers start to release newer models later on this year. A new partnership between Ford and Google could change the way that we see a lot of trucks and 
RVs operate in the future. Beginning in 2023, all Ford vehicles will run an Android system in the cab, meaning that they'll have things like Google Maps and Google Voice Assistants built right in. A lot of RVs are made on Ford chassis, and of course, a lot of people who pull trailers pull them with Ford trucks. The Android interface will also allow third-party developers to build their own apps for vehicles, which I think could open some really unique and cool possibilities. That's it for this episode of RV and Camping News. If you got some value out of this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel to get more like it. Let's wrap this up by reading some comments from our last video about the National Park Service's ban on commercial filming without a permit being struck down. Carolyn's RV Life, one of my favorite channels said, my attorney told me that if I were to challenge the law, we'd win. I'm glad someone did. Thanks for the video. Changing Lanes says, great news. Thanks for the update. Another one of my favorite channels. Thanks for watching. Brian says, it's nice to see common sense prevail. I think large scale productions that include vehicles, generators, and traffic control should require fee-based permits. You know, I think nobody thinks that large film productions shouldn't be paying uh, a permit fee. And I think the National Park Service is gonna definitely come up with rules uh, very quickly to solve that problem. Our journey in miles says, thank you for publishing this update. I have two national park visits that were fantastic, but we decided not to work on a YouTube episode because we did not want to chance getting fined. We'll go full steam ahead now. Wes says, great video with great news. I appreciate your delivery of the facts, not a bunch of fluff or feely stuff to have to wade through to get to the facts. Please keep up these great fact field short videos. I'll try to, Wes. Thanks so much for watching. John says, thanks for the information. Well done. I wonder if it applies to drones since they have been banned from national parks. A lot of people asking about drones on this video and uh, no, it doesn't apply to drones. Drones are still banned from national parks and the judge made it very clear that Laws like that, equipment-based laws, that's perfectly legal. The judge was reacting to the fact that commercial restrictions is a restriction on a type of content. And you can't do that because that's a freedom of speech restriction. All right, everybody, we'll see you on the next video. Keep logging those RV miles. Have a safe trip.